Good evening, this is the Rutland Town Planning Commission. It's July 11th of 2019, and welcome everyone. Uh, let's start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, if we could. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. The first item on our agenda is the town's new stormwater ordinance that went into effect uh, the 1st of June. And um, the Planning Commission will be the Stormwater Commission that's listed in that ordinance. And Bill Sweet, who um, he has a, an additional, a new title, as, or an additional title, um, is in addition to being uh, the Select Board's assistant, he will be the administrator of this ordinance and uh, we'll be doing a lot of the stuff on the ground for that. So we sent out a couple mailings and we've been putting things on the website so we're glad you're here. We're glad um, and I assume most of you live in that area of the watershed. Is that safe to assume? Okay, okay. So we are here um, we also have um, the consultant who helped write the ordinance and is doing a lot of the watershed planning for Rutland Town. This is Andres Teriso. He uh, has a, a consulting firm up in the Burlington area. And uh, he knows this even better than the town does right now since it's brand new. And he helped formulate it, write it. But we want to start with whatever concerns and questions you folks have about this. Uh, there, you have in your hands a brand new version of the ordinance. The select board the other night made a couple of revisions to it. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different than what's been up, up on the website, um, but not that much. The essence of what you've been reading on the website is, is still there. And if it's helpful, Barbara, I'll just say I'm happy to just give the why we're here, kind of how it came about, if you think that'd be helpful. Would that be helpful? Okay. The floor is yours. Okay. Um, just to give everybody a, just a quick overview of why the town is doing this, this is part, this is a requirement of uh, this, the town has a permit for the state for stormwater now, and so this is a, this is a minimum requirement that the state has um, imposed on the town, and also the other MS4. So really what we put together is really kind of the minimum required that the state is going to find acceptable. Um, and it's really starting with just the key areas of the areas just right adjacent to the stream. Just trying to <coughs> limit the vegetation clearing just adjacent to the stream. Um, and do you want to just, uh, do you mind describing those three maps a little bit for them? I can, yeah. The, the three maps, so there's, I guess starting with the, uh, I'm just going to start with this map right here. And these, this map is is referenced in the ordinance as well. So just to give the the, the real overview, you see this uh, orange boundary, right? This is the city and the town line. So the town is all up in here. So the, when we talk about, and then the blue line, okay, is the whole is the watershed area of the Moon Brook. Um, so the, when we talk about the regulated area first thing you should look at is this area right here. So what that is, is it's all the lands in the town which are uh, in the Moonbrook watershed. So that whole area, basically, just to boil it down in the, in the ordinance, there's a no dumping policy. Basically, the ordinance prohibits any kind of dumping of oils or any kind of chemicals into the stormwater system, which is eventually going to find its way to Moonbrook. That, that really applies to this whole area. Okay, and then when we look at the areas adjacent to the stream, we look at this map down here. The areas highlighted in orange are the areas just adjacent to the stream. And the reason that we have the stream up here and the stream down here, even though this is a separate stream, this is Muffin Brook and then this is Moon, 
as far as the state's concerned, it's really one brook. They both, they're both Moon Brook, okay? For the state's concern, because Muzzy feeds into Moon right here, so it's a tributary to it. So really the, the areas that are uh, affected are really the areas in orange right here and right here. And those are just areas where if you measure from the stream, you go out 50 feet on either side. Those are the areas that are referenced in the, in the ordinance as Appendix B. And so there's some specific things that apply to those areas. The land disturbance activities. The land disturbance right. activities. And generally tell you that, you know, we, there's some specific language in here, but it's really just a regulation on cutting trees that are greater than range in diameter, citing new impervious surfaces like a building or a parking lot within that 50 foot buffer. And just making sure if you are doing any cutting, um, there's proper erosion controls to basically stabilize the land and to revegetate. So things like using silt fence and seeding and mulching, just your standard erosion control practices. So those areas, if there is any planned activity, just land disturbance activity within those orange areas, you're gonna have to go to the town and fill out an application which will be reviewed and approved and the town will issue a permit to do that work. So they wanna know some specifics about what's being planned and how you're gonna mitigate so that yeah and, and the the appendix a map is our that shows all of the parcels in the moonbrook watershed and that pertains that pertains to the discharge kind of okay. regulations right. that are part of the discharge this. dumping policies right so all these parcels right here this is the appendix a right here and back to the the one with the green that primarily refers to the land disturbance. Those are the parcels. Right. right. That would be affected. What those yeah, the, this map is just intending to show, you know, the entire parcel. So you can key in and say, I own this parcel. Well, strip of it right in there within that 50 foot area, which is indicated in orange is gonna be impacted. So the, the whole parcel doesn't really get affected. It's just that one strip, which is along the stream. Does that make sense? Yeah. 25 feet on each side or 50 on each side? 50. 50 on each side? Yeah. And that's all properties, not just two plus acres? It's all properties. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because there seems to be, you, this, isn't there a meeting about storm water? Isn't that next week? For businesses that were in that, that letter that sent out? Um, I'm not sure what. This, I thought this meeting was about just the broken. Uh, well, this meeting is is for town residents affected by this. So I think most of the parcels are residential. Um, there may be a few that are commercial. Um, but but I don't know of another meeting. I thought there was a storm. Isn't there next week in the stormwater runoff meeting? This is that for businesses that they sent out? I think it's on the, is the 7th. The 17th. Not by the town, right? Not by the town. Not my engineer already sent me a letter saying the meeting's going to be here. I wonder now, is, it, is, is, is this a, is maybe this is the state? Because there, there's parallel things going on with the state. So the state is regulating all existing three-acre sites. Yeah, three-acre rule, so basically the state's going back and handing out permits to sites that have My name made the list on that. Because you must own a larger. Well, I, I own a couple hundred acres, but this one spot is like yeah. two acres from a transfer station. Yeah. And it says three acres, acres more, it's only two acres. So you, get, so you should be able to get out of it. Yeah. Okay. If that's the case. Okay. But I also own land on the Moon Brook, too. Right. Okay, so you're, you're at the right meeting tonight, and then yes. you probably want to go to the other one as well. Yes. Yeah, you, you can petition. Yeah, you have less than three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yep. In response to Any other questions? Any? I mean, any? You folks have any comments about? Yeah, I'm just wondering why they just chose the Moonbrook watershed as opposed to other streams in town. Right. That you know, say like East Creek. You know, that flows into Otter Creek, and I'm sure it has the same issues. Um, why wasn't that? Brought to light. Why wasn't there a townwide ordinance for all all streams as opposed to just restricting it just to you know, Moonbrook and Muzzy Brook? 
Yeah, so I think Andre can answer that. We also have Mary Ashcroft from the Select Board behind you that can answer part so of I that. I can just say from, from a regulatory standpoint, <coughs> the difference is that the Moonbrook, the state no. has designated it as so-called stormwater impaired, meaning it's not meeting the current the standards system. that they have for the water the quality children. standards, like in terms of the bugs and everything else, how they measure the quality of the water. It's not meeting it, and the state is saying, and oh, it's because the the there's all this uncontrolled stormwater going in it. That's a little different than, than well. East Creek. East Creek has its own problems, but it's not designated as a stormwater impaired. And when, it's, when a stream's designated as stormwater impaired, it gets put into this track where it triggers this MS4 requirement by the town, and it it's triggers all these other regulations, which is different than East Creek. So just the answer to your question, just from a regulatory standpoint, is it's not required uh, by the state to, to implement this town-wide in the areas of East Creek. And Mary, I think the thinking of the select board was that we'd start with this, this watershed, get some of these regulations in place, um, get people used to them and what oh, they entail. Also acutely aware that well in town doesn't like so many pleasant underlying populations so we're trying to make it as palatable as possible and only deal with the areas that we had to deal with. I think that was more of a thing. And we did it now rather than waiting because I had heard that eventually it would be a town-wide requirement throughout the state, he thought if we were in now and grandfathered, as you said, getting used to the idea first. Yeah. Yeah, Is that movement grown any feet, Andre, the town-wide, statewide? Um, not with the new, not with the most current regulation. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if like the next time they rewrite the MS4, it will go that way, for sure. Um, and they were considering that at one point when mm -hmm. they were rolling out the new, these MS4 permits that the state writes and the town has to comply with, they expire every five years. So the state basically rewrites the permit and at that time they have the ability to basically put in any kind of new regulations or what they, what they want. This last one, it's still, this is still the minimum standard, but you know, in another four or five years, you know, that may change. <coughs> Do you folks have any questions about what are discharges or you know what's what won't be allowed in that kind of? I just have a comment. The last meeting that I went present. to, they said there was 38 parcels in Rutland Town, and on my street there's like seven houses, and I think it was Andre said that if you had two acres or less, it didn't apply to them. They could cut as many trees as they wanted to. And I see that my neighbors have done so, but my question to you was, that I had 11 acres and you told me that I couldn't cut trees more than three inches in three. diameter, but my neighbor that lives 50 feet from me can cut 15 trees along well, the about the president. because he has less than two acres. Well, I'm not sure where the two acres are coming from, but so there's one, one acre is, is, I mean, really with, with respect to the town ordinance, it's really, it's, it's by, it's, if you're within that 50 foot zone from the brook, pretty much. Yeah, the houses are all less than an acre along that street, it's for mine. You're saying an acre? Acre or less. But are you saying the entire parcel is an acre? Yes, there's like five houses. That shouldn't, that doesn't make any difference. The, the, the lot size doesn't make any difference. <coughs> They still cannot cut trees, or they can cut trees. They can. Um, three inches in diameter. So if they are cutting trees from within 50 feet of the stream, yes. that's that needs a permit. Trees that are not dead, diseased, or heavily damaged by ice storms are exempt. I mean, they can cut those. Right. There's there's an right. There's exemptions in it. I mean, basically, you're just you, they sh it should be an application to the to the town to do that. That. Well, this this went into effect June first. This right. this may have happened before well, that date. The, I'm talking about the meeting we had whenever it was a while was ago. Last, last yeah. Because yeah. these people didn't come to the meeting because they didn't get a notice because they weren't. So, not to com not to complicate too, but the other thing to be aware of is the state has their own regulations. So, at the state level. 
if you are disturbing more than one acre of land. So, like, these people, if they're, you're saying they're cutting two, two acres, they're, they're supposed to be getting permits from the state to do that regardless. And that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter where you are. That's everywhere in the town. So that's... Clearing on that size, you're you're required, and actually the ordinance does specify that if that, that you should be people should be getting a state permit to do that. If you're, if you're doing over one acre or more of land clearing, you're supposed to be getting a permit to the state directly to do that, regardless of whether you're 50 feet from the stream. Or I'm, I'm not even sure that Moonbrook runs behind his house anymore because two years ago the state redrew the map in Waterbury from their computer. And, and created a 12 acre wetland back there and his house isn't in the wetland so it doesn't I know but doesn't the state is, in terms of the state regs doesn't matter if you're in Moonbrook or not well it does if you want to clear 50 feet from whatever is supposed Moonbrook yeah, in terms of the town ordinance I'm just trying to say the state ordinance apply the state rule applies everywhere it doesn't matter where you are so it kind of sounds like we haven't gotten the word out well enough yet about this. Do you folks have any suggestions of what would work in, in, in your neighborhoods? Uh, what else we can do to make sure you know, some people, it's not just some people doing this and some people aren't, but that everybody knows what, what the new rules are? So you're saying this letter that you just sent out was sent to every property owner? Wh whether they live here or not. I'm sorry? None of my neighbors got the letter. Did you get the letter, Chris? I'm not, I don't, I don't border Moonbrook either. Right. No, I'm, I'm just in that section they claim is now well So we sent out 41 letters, and those would be the, the green parcels, right? So, if you lived... Yeah. One yesterday must have been stater. Right. Mm. We, we did send out two mailings, yeah. The neighbor that I'm talking about, his, his trees that he's cutting are three feet from the brook, and the brook is actually closer to his house than the brook is to my house. Mm. But it's not on his property. Old it's brook's not on his property? I don't think so. Oh, well, that's probably why he didn't get a letter. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, he can, so he can cut any tree he wants because he's, he's, not, he's not within, the brook isn't on his property, so he can cut any tree on his property he wants. It's not on it's his, his property, property but he's on the moon. This is on, this on moon brook. Yeah. He's within that 50 foot boundary of the brook, but the brook isn't on his property, so he's not affected by this permit. Why, is, really? why isn't he? Why is he cutting other people's? He's not yeah. cutting. He's, not. he's cutting trees on his property. His land but the brook the isn't brook, on his property. The brook is not on his property. So how is he within 50 feet? Because the brook is within 50 feet of his property line. Uh, it's, okay. it's literally 10 feet from his property line, probably, right. and he's cutting trees right well, up to his property. That's a pretty unique situation, right? Hopefully there aren't too many more like that out there. <laughs> <laughs> but the, under the Shoreline Protection Act, that boundary line does not. Make sure you're it, it doesn't matter. And at the property. Right. Right. So I don't know whether this ordinance does or not. Well, no, I mean, I don't think it does. It's just a matter that you can get the letter, but it shouldn't, it yeah. shouldn't matter. The definition of a buffer area doesn't mention right. the property line. Right, right, right. So right, but he didn't get a letter, so he doesn't know that he's yeah. not supposed to cut that tree. Well, well it, it is in here, though. The story is yeah. that this is going to be a complaint-driven enforcement deal. If you don't upset your neighbors, they're not going to turn you in. Right. <laughs> That's the truth of it. Well, don't ask, don't tell. I'll say the fine when I get one. <laughs> you know this, do you know the property, the address? Nope. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to send a letter. <laughs> I'll give him a copy of the order. Okay, thank you. I mean, I just, I think it's, in, I, I think it's important. I understand the, the whole encroaching the creeping regulation issues, but... I think it's just important to keep it in context that 
the areas within that 50 foot buffer are not really areas that, that you should have. Most of the time, there should be reason to do anything. And they're going to be wet areas, they're going to be subject to flooding. So you're not going to want to put anything there anyway, and for the most part. So it's just, it's a relatively small area of impact, I think, in the context of gr the greater patterns of development and stuff. So is, is, is Moonbrook and Muzzybrook impacted in Rutland Town? Yes. Ryan is back at you. Yeah. It's, it's the water quality of Moonbrook and or Muzzybrook is, is significantly challenged in Rutland Town. Yeah. Not talking about once it goes into the city, I'm talking about from Menden to Rutland City Line. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, honestly. I mean, I haven't looked at the data in a while, it kind of, I know, so in terms of the state's perspective, it is. Uh, in terms of the state's perspective, but that's because it flows through uh, Rutland City. Probably, yeah. So we're being forced to live up to new standards because Rutland City's piss poor practice. It's a little more urban. Uh, Menden was not included, the, yeah. the headwaters. Yeah, according to that map. Yeah. Muzzy Brook and Moonbrook start in Memphis. They do. Yeah, they do. So yeah. why aren't they effective? Uh, it goes back many years, but they somehow got out of it. Why didn't we say no? Why didn't we get out of it? Menden got out of it. I'm not sure the history. It was quite, it was, I mean, it just doesn't seem fair that we're being punished when our water is perfectly fine. And the city that caused the problem is the reason that we now have to have new standards. I should say, I know I don't, I'm not working directly with the city, but I know that they are working on a very similar, they're working on buffers for us. Are they? Yeah. They have to, because they're now regulated under the same permit. They fought it for a while, but they're now going ahead with it, so they're going to have to do the same thing. And I guess you can just think of this as, as we go forward, this is going to include more and more brooks and more of the town. And these are, these are practices that we hope are not a real burden on folks, but that they're, you know, good management of people's parcels and of the water running through those. And for you know, we're we're starting here because of state. Who was the gentleman here last year that had the Christmas tree farm? He's he's he lives right down the road. Moonbrook runs through his property. He has an established Christmas tree farm, and obviously he cuts Christmas trees every year. Now is he going to be affected with his fifty foot buffer? He can't sell a tree. He, he just may need a permit. That doesn't mean he can't cut them. So he's going to have to get a permit to sell Christmas trees. No, he's going to have to get a permit to cut the trees, Within not 50, sell. 50 feet. So he's going to have to get a permit to sell his Christmas trees. Oh, good. If it's within 50 feet of the brook, because it's a cut your own. So I show up, I go and cut down mm. a Christmas tree. Mm. But this one's in, within 50 feet of the brook. Now I'm going to have to wait for him to get a permit so I can cut it down. Yeah, and the, and the permit's a pretty simple thing. Bill has the permits, um, and... It shouldn't take a whole lot to fill it out. It shouldn't be expensive. I mean, at, least, at least with the wetland rules and regulations, if it's an established farm or agricultural use, that's all not affected by the wetland rules because it's agri agricultural use. Christmas tree farm would qualify for agricultural use. So I would argue that he shouldn't be having to get a permit to cut down a tree in a Christmas tree plantation that he's had for yeah, 40 it's years. Actually, it's exempt. It's, I think it's exempt because the agricultural. Yeah, I just checked, double check. So, section 7 4 exemption exempts farming or agriculture as defined by the Vermont Agriculture, blah, blah, blah. So, it does follow similar guidelines to the wetland rules. And then, forestry operations defined. So, I think you would probably find Christmas tree farms in there. Any other questions or co questions for the expert or com comments for the town? Stay 50 
feet away. So are you saying that um, like I have 11 plus acres and only three and a half of it I mow and the rest is all wooded? So you're saying that I may be able to cut trees or I absolutely can't? If it's not, then you would have to apply for apply, a apply to the town. Yes, yeah. So would I get the permit if I have like uh, there's so many pine trees that I don't really like that are less than 50 feet from the brook? I've already cut some before June 1st. But are you saying that there's no way that I can dispose of the trees to open my view because they're more than three inches in diameter? And they're not diseased or no. And they're Just heavily wooded. Yeah, I mean, it may require some supplemental planting of maybe some, if it's, if it's views that you're concerned with, you know, there's provisions that, that could allow you to cut those higher trees, but maybe replace it with like a low growing shrub or something like that. Because I was told at the last meeting, my, um, I'm a master gardener, so I have a 250-foot row of hedges of flowering plants that are less than 50 feet from the road. Mm -hmm. And I also have um, plants growing that are perennials that spread for erosion control. And I was told by Joe and Dally when I came out to look at it that I may have to get rid of those plants. Hmm. They, they're serving a purpose. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it sounds like it. It sounds like those would be beneficial yeah. to me. He was the idiot that was here last year? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But then he also said that I can, I can not plant anything more, only what is there already. Yeah, I'm not sure. We were told we, we, we mow our grass right through the brook right now, but with the new mm -hmm. ordinance, if mm -hmm. we were building a house now, we wouldn't be able to plant grass right to the brook. To the brook. Very so does that mean on the other side of the brook that goes, our house is probably 60 feet from the brook? We can't cut down ferns and things like that? Um, trees. It's time to take and what? Less than three inches diameter. Yes. We've I'm had enough. Losing our yeah, it's just basically no no new or expanded turf grass lawn right within right ten. Right. There's a, there's also provision right in here that says ten within ten feet of the top of stream banks. So you can maintain <laughs> existing. You can't create new, new, new lawn up to actually ten feet. But you could. Well, we whack on the other side all the ferns and things as long as they're not three inches in diameter, are you saying? Which is why I've never understood. Um, they're not trees. Right, clearing of trees. Right, I guess if you weren't, if you weren't actually removing it and replacing it with grass, I think you probably could. And what about existing trees that fall? Can they be cut up? I don't know how they turn yes. it off at night. I don't know how they turn it off in the yeah. weekend and go off and do whatever it is. Yeah, it looks like the yeah. provisions in the regulation um, cover the clearing of existing vegetation. Like if you dig it all up. Take it up, right. Not, not so much the maintenance. Right. Any departing words for us or questions? Did we answer your questions, I hope? Okay, well, you, um, you know where we are, if you have questions. Um, Bill is here all the time, the town office. He will be administering um, this ordinance. Um, so feel free to give Bill a call or leave uh, the Planning Commission a message. And anything comes up. And feel free to come to any of our meetings. Um, the Stormwater Commission will probably meet on the same night as the Planning Commission meets. So we'll have dual meetings those nights. So if you have some issues um, and you can't figure out when the Stormwater Commission is meeting, look for the Planning Commission times, meeting times. So, had just one last question, I guess. For those that don't border the brook and are just in the Moon Brook watershed, and what stormwater regulations 
are are they impacted by? Is that in this? That's the discharge. The discharge. Yeah. Right. And so, the so and the illegal connections. If you try to like drain. Like washing machine up to the stormwater system. Can't do that. So it's all got to go through your through your leach field like yeah. normal and. Right. No dumping. So your car. So, so in the ordinance, it, it, is that Article Four? Right. Correct. Okay. Just, just for your reference. Article Four. Article Four in the yeah. ordinance. Yeah. Ordinance. And Article Five is the one with the land disturbance, the fifty feet. Okay, if you don't have anything else for us, thank you for coming. Um, you may want to wait a moment before you step outside. And you're certainly, you're certainly welcome to stay. Um, the next part of our meeting is for the commission to ask any lingering questions it has about the ordinance. So thank you. Everybody signed in? Okay. Um, so let's move down to approval of the agenda now that we have a quorum. I knew it was good for something. <laughs> Great, CJ. Thank goodness, you got. Would anyone like to make a motion to? Just trying to find it. <laughs> Would someone please make a motion? A well, motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> Would someone please second? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? of the agenda. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, any other public comment? Mary, you have any? You guys think for us? like yell at me for anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. The rain? <laughs> Mary, I mean. Yeah, you know, the solar <laughs> in charge of a lot of <laughs> I know it was a bit of a stretch, but. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Dan. Uh, yeah, I have yes, sure. this. Are we going to talk about the comments, the things that came yes, up? Yes, that's next. This? Okay. Yeah. We're there. We're there. Okay. So, um, yeah. Well, and, well, and any questions for Andres while he's still here? Yes. <laughs> I hadn't noticed this before, but but in s what segment 5 2 2 5 2 D 2, I guess. Um, there's something specific to what they asked about any project involving clearing clearing of existing vegetation addition or modification of imper impervious substructures that's not important but clearing of existing vegetation was one of the ones they they mentioned right uh, so clearing is 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 beyond maintenance I mean, yeah clearing is turning earth where you're actually exposing the soil okay all right so our, our or if they had plants down there and they wanted to take them up and put other plants there, I guess that that would. Yeah, I mean, I don't think replace. You know, I think it's more so the, in the context of like constructing, something, you know, exposing the soil, like in more of a form of reinstalling plants. Yeah. All right. So we have a new version that the select board approved the other night, a couple nights ago. Um, that includes um, Kevin Brown reviewed the suggestions the planning commission came up with, and so it includes most of those, not all of those. And um, on your desk, you should have an email with Bill's Bill's name at the yep. top, but it's it's Kevin's comments. So, any other um, any comments from what we heard tonight? One other comment was that it just 
it appeared that the impression was if you didn't get a letter, you weren't impacted by this at all, uh, which, which I, <laughs> I think is uh, you know, probably just to, just to muddy the waters, but that is something to, if, if that thought's out there and we have people who didn't show up because they didn't get a letter, uh, it seems like I, I don't know what we do about it, but it just seems like we've missed some people. We we haven't communicated, and I and I think even it, it's difficult to pick this up and read it if you get it in the mail mm -hmm. or something. I mean, and, and yeah, it is. I mean it's just as difficult not only to read it but but to understand it also. Yeah. So it's not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what we do about it, but uh, just. I mean. I think just, you know, I'm not sure of the proper channel to get it out there, but I feel like really simplifying it to be, to say, if you're within 50 feet of the stream, you need to pay attention. Really. And everybody else should, you know, prohibition on dumping, I mean, that, that seems to be relatively straightforward. I think people can understand that. But in terms of the nitty gritty of what you need yeah. to do, I think just simplifying it that look, hey, if you're if you're planning on doing any work, fifty feet of, of really any stream I mean if there's a stream there and you're within fifty feet, you should go check in with the town to see if you're in the impact zone where yeah. you need to do something. Yeah. Um, maybe just creating a simplified message like that. Maybe not even Saying if you're in this part, just if you're within 50 feet of the stream. Go, go check in. Yeah. Have you faced this before, where multiple messages had to go out to just get people to even recognize there is a new? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think like like you said, it's hard it's hard to grasp initially, even if you've been working on it. Like it's technical. It's hard, it's hard for it not to be technical. So I think it's it probably will take. <laughs> More effort to get people to, it's to, to take it. Yeah. It's new. We're, we're just going to have to work with the people. But if we see something happening and just try to. Well, yeah, it's exactly. Going to be issues. And, and I mean, the thing too with it, it's not. It's not all black and white. It is going to be site, somewhat site specific. That's yeah. why if somebody comes with a specific not, issue to the town, says, "Hey, this is what I want to do." Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be some interpretation the about, of an increasingly autocratic you know, there what is permissible and what's, what's not. The what's the current level of concern about potential violations as they exist right now? Uh, from who's from? Well, from, pers from the perspective of, uh, a blind perspective of the ordinance and those affected. I missed the memo. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it is, I think Fred was saying, I mean, it's a lot of the, the, in, it's the enforcement issue is, is challenging. I mean, it's people that are, like Byron, people that are out in the street would really be the ones that would notice non-compliance, right, or other, or other landowners. You know, if Byron or whoever from the town is not on the street and nobody reports anything, it, what would be left of it would be hard, it, you know, it's going to be, it will be challenging. Right? I wasn't looking at it uh, strictly from the perspective of a an enforcement, but in terms of just what it, what's the, <laughs> what is the level of concern that we have that there are violations going on, theoretically, <laughs> right now as a result. I mean, we heard a couple of the um, <coughs> landowners indicating, you know, what happens if this is the situation or that's the situation? I was just wondering if there's any idea, if we have any idea about the impact on those parcels and the likelihood that they are currently in violation. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know if I'm interpreting your question exactly correctly. I'm just thinking from the state's perspective. I mean, there's no, there's no specific mandate from the state in terms of um, a level of compliance that they expect with the ordinance or anything like that. There's no specific standards. So, I mean, it's, I think, you know, in any ordinance, I mean, there's all, there's going to be non-compliance issues. I mean, it, it, maybe we just have to figure out 
about the best way to make it <laughs> make people follow through with what they say they're going to do but like in, in terms of what the state is handing down I mean basically it's pretty generic in that you ha you're, you're supposed to be implementing this ordinance that has these minimum criteria but that's basically it there's no right so there's no uh, <clears throat> there's no presumed at, at least with respect to our our situation here and the implementation of this ordinance locally there's no presumption that there are violations or not violations so there's no uh, study or, or uh, data gathering about the parcels in question and, and where they stand with I respect to the I ordinance. I don't think that was the intention of the select board no, to, no, to go I, back and years ago <coughs> I was a zoning administrator I didn't go out for the Right. But people would tell me about it, you know, if something was built too close to their boundary line or if, if they saw a violation or, if, you know. So I, I think it's probably going to work that way. Um, obviously, if there's a sudden rush of muddy water coming from an area, that's a clue that something's up. And something right. Might right. So, and that's really what we're trying to do is prevent that kind of So it's awareness. It's awareness, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, education. Yeah. As well. Being honest. And stopping any of these activities in the future. Yeah. yeah or, or, or trying to. We put little, right. uh, in various towns, they would put little markers next to stormwater drains saying, stop, don't, don't dump your motor oil. Right. Um, and uh, it's just, it's public publicity and a public campaign. Well, and the, and the other. In the week requirements of the MS4 are with the Planning Commission and all the outreach and education piece there's other requirements under this MS4 permit that require the town to basically continue the outreach and education to the public and you know the ordinance this can be one of the topics that you can educate you can through Facebook to the website events mailings I mean that's you are, you know, so you can get, you basically can get credit towards those, that other outreach and education requirement that we've been working on, like through, you know, pushing the ordinance to get people more plugged into it. Mary, what did you hear tonight? Did you, were you surprised at anything or are you going to take really. note? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just going to take people a while to get their heads around Reading regulations is not a lot of fun, and, right. and you, uh, reading them in the abstract is even harder. You have right. to go in with the project in mind and right. say, mm -hmm. do I need a permit if I want to do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. You do. And that's, that's why when somebody actually, if at least they have the understanding that, well, I'm within this zone, you know, they can come to the town and say, well, look, this is what I want to do, and then you can kind of figure out. How to do it. How to do it. Inside your right. stuff. Even inside that yeah. winter coat. Maybe. Our job is to and Bill, with these, um, the erosion and sediment control plans, the major and the minor, or the major and whatever, simplified, are you familiar with those? Or do you, or is that something you I can... Take an hour drive tomorrow. I'm going to probably take this with me. <laughs> 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 but th those, those are state, <coughs> essentially state... Um, yeah. Drafted plans. Yeah. Are, are they are they really burdensome? Um, the state actually did a good job putting out a manual for the con erosion risk. It's called the Low Risk Sites Guide to Erosion Control. It's a yellow manual, and it's got photographs with a thumbs up and a thumbs down of proper erosion stuff. And I think I actually now that I'm thinking of this bill, I may have. I told you that I was going to see if I could get you hard copies, and I never followed through on that. So I'm going to make a note, because the state used to have those printed in hard copies, and they'd give you like a box of them. Yeah. So that would be the perfect, and they were like a field size, so that would be the perfect thing with the permit that you could hand to somebody and they could see, because there's photos. Right. So I'll, uh, I'll Because our, our land disturbance permit form is pretty simple. Um, and I don't think it's anything like what these control plans are probably going to be asking. No, and but don't, don't ruin your vacation reading that. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've learned that there's some properties that are, are within 50 feet of the brook, but they're not 
they're not on the book. And maybe we need to try to reach out to those people to get them get them on board. Um, those that didn't get letters. There's obviously some out somebody out there that didn't. Yeah. That was I, I don't know where it would be, but I don't quite understand how that happened. Um, but well, their their property. Norm. Norm, you're in front of the camera. We'd start at six. You didn't get the memo, I guess. <laughs> you weren't the only one. <laughs> yeah, so do you know what what happened? Why some people didn't get the letter, Howard? I mean, we... <coughs> this, this list was made up a few years ago, apparently. This, oh. is, this, this, we're working off from a list that was generated some time ago. Oh. And, uh, right? I believe that's what it is. It's, it's been... Yeah. Andre, so. yeah. I think it's a. Did you start that list a few years ago of the parcels? Yeah. So probably some changed hands or. I'm sure they changed hands, but I mean, there still could be some properties that don't touch. Don't touch the book, but they're within 50 feet of it, you know, or, or close to it, or yeah. Close enough to be concerned with, I guess. But, you know, maybe the list just needs to be refined and updated to pick up. There could be new, just new, new houses yeah. there, new construction. Yeah. So. But that river corridor should cover all of those, right, Andres? I mean, it should be more right. It, yeah, it should. But if, like you said, if there's a property that's changed hands, maybe maybe it didn't go to the right person. In that direction. You know, if there's a new, maybe if there's a PO box or something. Like we have a lot of properties changing hands, and yeah. and some that are right uh, right on the brook that were. I thought a month or so ago they were they were going to change hands. They haven't yet, but it's it's that situation where our mailing is going to the the property owner who lives out of town someplace, mm -hmm. and uh, you know renting his property at, or what whatever. Yeah. That's. Yeah, so I think it behooves us to send out reminders <coughs> about this new ordinance and repeated thought, mailings. Yeah, I thought the recommendation Andres had was good, though, with a a, a one or two sentence mm -hmm. statement telling people if if you're within 50 feet. Uh, of and if the, there's uh, right any way to update yeah. the, the landowner property owner information. Um, yeah, I guess that'd be a question of, I'm trying to think, parcels, I'm trying to remember how we did that. So we had a digital copy of that, the parcel mapping. I don't know if that's been updated. It would take a little work to probably go through and see which ones have changed hands. I don't know how current the, the latest, like how current is the current list. <laughs> I, I think it's probably time to review the list and go right. through it. You know, go through the whole thing piece by piece and check them off on a map and, and uh, we got all kinds of maps with property lines on them the town parcel maps and and it should be doable to be able to identify what's what and who's who you get back if you want to let me know i can help okay I have a question that's, that's not exactly, it's just related, and it's the MS4 permit. I, I mean, I keep reading what MS4 is, and I, I'm ha I have trouble figuring out what an, why you need an MS4 permit. MS4 seems like an infrastructure of, of conduits to, for water to drain, so what's, what's the permitting of MS4 permit? What does, what it's is It's a that? state permit. Yeah, and it, and it the reason that the town got roped into it, I think my understanding is it's not just the size of the town, but it's also the fact that Moonbrook is designated as stormwater impaired. So you, I don't know exactly why, but because it's stormwater impaired and because the town is a certain size, basically it gets roped into this MS4 permit. And the only thing the MS4 really means is that there's this, sh this stormwater collection system, all the pipes and catch basins in the town. But why do I, when do I need a per, an MS4 permit? You don't. The town has it. The town has it, yeah. And the, okay. town, so the right. town has a valid permit with the state. You don't. Yeah. 
landowners don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was in there. Anything else for Andres? Just one we had a conversation Yeah, I, my understanding was we we made the corrections, we sent the final one to Bill, and I thought we had addressed all everything that we discussed. So I, I think we're talking about the ones that ended up with Kevin Brown, the town attorney. And um, he, he went through the, the list and um, suggested that most of them be um, you know, adopted into a revised ordinance, not all of them. Um, there was one exception where we added a 48-hour notice before the administrator goes out and he said he didn't think that was, he didn't like that. Um, he didn't think we should give them notice. He thinks uh, if it was an emergency situation, we need to be out there as fast as we can. Um, but the other ones, uh, the criminal and the civil ones, it's kind of a mixed bag there. Um, but there is... It's, 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 it's in, in the you, chair you, right next to you, Norm. Yeah, you have it's an got email. got five on top. You see that? So what, what has happened uh, since we last met, Norm, is that uh, Kevin has made some suggestions. The select board has looked at those, and the select board has revised the ordinance slightly. And that happened the other night. So you have a copy of the latest, of the, of the final ordinance, we hope. Well, I found two little things that i got to remove. Oh. It's just <laughs> removing the deletion, so. And then Kevin's comments are there, too. Right there. No, okay, Kevin's an comments email. are an email. It looks like this. It says five. Anything else for Andres? Andres, any... any <laughs> Any I'm advice for to, us? I'm just looking forward to the first application. <laughs> Wait, w was was there a Hubbard here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that we, we may have one yeah. coming. Yeah. Go through it. US agencies to provide citizenship information and it may be a uh, maybe a three acre situation. It may be. A <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Be an eye opener. That was part. I think they're looking at doing another subdivision, so I think that's part of what their motivation was. So if it's a planned project like that, it's good to, you know, if you have this information up front, mm -hmm. by the buffers and work around it. That's the best case, really. Right. Situations where you're retroactively trying to fix an you know, existing issue of some sort. Okay. Anything else? What are the implications for us as the Planning Commission as we look at subdivisions or other things? And have we taken into consideration the uh, impact of the new ordinance with respect to our operating procedures for what needs to be filed and what criteria need to be met in order for a plat to be accepted? Well, I, I think we could look at them together. I think they'd still be separate. What what you know our our what our regulations are for subdivisions, and then if they fall into one of these areas, the watershed, we would be looking at something, and and if we needed to blend them at some point, then we would. But I, well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to this question that nobody ever likes me to go to, and that is our regulations and whether there needs to be a change because our form only states uh, cites those things that are in the. Um, um, land use True. permits, and so. Norm. <coughs> That's what I was asking. Yeah. Can we do that without amending the subdivision regulations? 
Well, that's the question I was asking, Norm. I mean, thanks for saying the same thing, but uh, because that's and the subdivision isn't a isn't an application. Though. The subdivision requirements aren't an application to build anything. Am I right? Where where am I missing that yeah. connection? All it's saying is that a piece of property is going to be subdivided. It doesn't it's doesn't mean that someone's going to build right. on it. Right. Or they're going to cut the grass against the river. No, but we have our specifications that we're supposed Mary, to look at. I think we've got two different layers of permitting here. The, the subdivision permits come to the Planning Commission. The first, the permits for um, stormwater go to Bill. Right. And then there's appeal to you, you folks, right? So. Right. But I mean, why would they need to be? So I don't think you can combine them all in one Yeah, permit. I don't think that makes sense. I don't yeah. think you'd want I mean, to. You know, the most you want to do is maybe just remind someone that if you are within 50 feet of a... You may need to do this. You may need to yeah, have that's, another yeah. permit check with... That's what I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, and they're, they're going to the same place anyway. They're going to Bill and asking these questions. So I don't think you should... I don't think that it necessarily, other than a reminder, needs to be something a change in our subdivision requirements I don't think I, I I think it would be it would be to our advantage to at least wait until we are a little more familiar with the stormwater uh, ordinance and and how and and what what problems we run into and and giving permits and and, and reviewing it before we start changing other things to, recommending to be change. consistent with it or, or adding anything to it. anything just I, I would I would because I don't feel comfortable saying that that any one thing is going to take care of in the problems I, no. I was simply asking the question about what the implications are if any <coughs> I thought I totally took it that way too. I'm so not, I'm not, it's no big deal. So I'm glad you're clarifying <laughs> it, but I totally thought you were suggesting that. That's what it sounds. No, like. I was just asking what the implications were, and if it had any implications for us. No. I thought Norm. I thought what Norm said and what you said was your idea was was suggesting that. I misinterpreted. Yeah, I did too. I apologize. The, um, <coughs> so that's the question in my mind: If somebody comes in with a subdivision permit, comes to us. Mm -hmm. application, subdivision permit application comes to us and we pick up that it's been a 50 foot area over shore. It seems to me that is it our responsibility to go back and tell it? Well, they would start with Bill. Invariably, they come into this office and, and ask what they need to do. Well, I think the thing I was talking about was just because they're subdividing land doesn't mean they're doing anything to it. So the subdivision in and of itself doesn't mean they're going to need one. If they're going to go in and then do some development. development or something like that, then they would need one. But that's a separate process or a separate event of the subdivision itself. So, Norm? But my concern, and perhaps Dana's, from the community a lot, a lot of interest at this point and somebody could not be aware of it yes and if it were a question some kind of question like a subdivision application do you intend to construct um, at least to that we can say we have a, a place to start to say we need to file another application rather than well, I don't see why Bill cannot ask that question of the people that come in the office. Sure, he can. Because he's responsible um, for, the, you know, the starting starting both of these types of permits. So I, I think we're making a problem where one doesn't exist yet. I agree. And we don't know if it's ever going to be a problem, and we can address it later on if it does become one. Um, the, the good thing is everything is going to one place or starting in one place and I think that's going to eliminate a lot of confusion or, or, or questions of people doing new activity and yes we need to get more of an educational you know 
effort, you know, continue that and make sure the property owners are more familiar with this and more familiar. Um, but I, I think this is this is this is the process. Andres, I don't want to keep you here all. Oh yeah, no, no worries. Anything else for Andres? All right. Well. Thank you. Yeah, just keep me uh, informed. And you're still on retainer. Yes. Thank goodness. Forever. No, we hope. <laughs> it's good to make progress. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, Andres. One thing we haven't uh, decided on with all of this stormwater ordinance, and, and Jim and Norm, you can come up to the desk. We don't know how many people are going to be here this evening. If, if you want to come up here, or you can stay where you are. But the filing fee is st still not filled in on the form in case the Hubbards or somebody comes, comes in. What was our discussion? It, less than five hundred dollars, more than twenty-five. I don't remember that we came to a yeah. conclusion. But we didn't. Yeah, we we didn't. Far with that. <clears throat> I thought we were going to. I thought we would postpone that until after this. Well, I mean, I think we're close enough to make it to need a yeah. need a figure in there. No, it was just that we didn't come to a decision. Right. 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 <coughs> So let's let's fill this in. Hundred dollars for this. What, what do we charge for the subdivision? Three hundred. Oh, three hundred. Yeah. But that's because. Publication. Yeah. Are there other towns that you have to compare to? No. Is a hundred dollars a reasonable amount, Howard? Do you think? It's certainly enough. I, I you know, for what for what we're doing, uh, I'm not sure if it's. I, I don't know how much work is involved involved with it. Um, you know, bills part and whatever. It's uh, could require a visit. We're not we're not in a business to try to make money on all this stuff. It's just really just to. Well, maybe it's a question of how many hours of time are involved and how are we offsetting that. The compensation. So, what ideas do we have? Is it just, as I'm looking at this permit now, Bill, I just see that there's a filing fee for the appeal. Um, I, 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 there's nothing here that says like there's like a site visited or anything like that for a lot of these things. That would potentially just be an increase, but I don't um, So I think we have two fees here. I mean, on, on, this, on this third page, there is a date received for the permit application and fee received. And then there's an, another. I don't know that we all have that. Amount. Do we all have that? Should have. We, 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 I don't. But we, we, oh, we, 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 we Yeah, we've yeah. had this. Um, no one has it? I didn't. If we had it, I didn't bring it. We. we um, it was right around the 1st of June we put this together uh, in one of our meetings and approved it. That would have been the just, 30th just of... Just have it in place. The 30th of May. That I wasn't think at so. the meeting. I, I don't know if it was one just before or right afterwards. I think it was the one just before. Yeah, because I was at the next meeting because I was not at the <coughs> 30th meeting. 
So, okay, so let's, this shouldn't be too hard. What should we have for a fee for just applying, coming into the office and going through with Bill? Uh, what plans are necessary? And that's it. What paperwork needs to be filed with you, Bill? Just the permit. Like that's just that's this paper? Yeah. I was under the impression that you may have to do a site visit on some of these. I, I'm, I'm looking and I, 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 I yeah. didn't see anything before, but I'm, I'm not seeing anything now. That, that, that's what I was saying before. That may, that may be the only justification for a, a, an increased one. Yeah. But I don't see anything about that um, what other permits do we have that require paperwork filing and just logging of information have, like, driveway access and construction right away and some of those have I think the floodplain ordinance does too yeah there's, there's, there's some other ones but <laughs> there's some that don't have any uh, like the peddler's license is a hundred dollars like you know that, that's, that's just to file it so but like a driveway one is I think 150 plus filing fees so but this permit doesn't actually get recorded. It's just, it doesn't go, it doesn't go across the hall. It's, it just stays with us. So there's no recording fees or anything like that. So there's nothing to justify more than $100. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, set the fee uh, for the permit, stormwater permit, at $100. Second. And what about the other, you want to do this, the other fee at the same time? Um, the notice of appeal, well, I'll read the whole thing. I'd rather do each one separately. Okay. <clears throat> Any discussion on the, the filing fee, the initial filing fee? Well, well I'm still <laughs> I'm still concerned about about the, the need for a visit. And, and it may not say so specifically in here, but the thing I, I brought up earlier, just just of changing, um, I can't remember what it was now, hang on, I'll find it. Just clearing exist existing vegetation, if someone comes in and says, I, I want a permit to do that, would there be a need to go look, or would that, I'm, I'm trying to think of worst case. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, I mean, it sounds to me like there are going to be situations where you get some pushback and you're going to have to go look for yourself. I don't know if that's going to be frequent or not. Probably the real work comes in if, if, if there's an appeal and we get more into some appeal with somebody over I event. think there's a, is there a different appeal fee? Yes, yes. that's why I yeah. said I'd rather do one yes. fee at a time. Yeah, yeah. well the, the fact that there is one though is yeah, there is important. One. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's well, for somebody just to come in to get a permit for s some little things, it's yeah. not a whole lot. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't think that we. The administrative officer shall administer, implement, and enforce the provisions of this ordinance. So, I don't think I, I can't find where there there needs to be a site visit beforehand. Yeah, I haven't seen anything. I mean, it, it may be more the enforcement of what looking at what happens. I think enforcement side of it so but the enforcement side of it is going to carry more work and more cost but that should that cost be transferred to the applicants I don't know it seems it? like there would be uh, once we hit our first one or two of these we kind of maybe we have to make an adjustment True. But I mean we I think if we start a with a point, more yeah. realistic fee yeah. which I think a hundred dollars is pretty realistic yeah I think, where it's a decent, I think it's an easy starting point. Mm -hmm. we, you know, the other concern is if we make it too much, is it to discourage somebody from doing it? It's like, well, it's not worth it. So I'm going right. to... Right. Not even tell them what <laughs> everything I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, because we, we, if anything, we want to encourage them to come in. Right. Yes. Not discourage them. Yeah. And this could become an issue. Okay, let's vote on this motion, $100 for the filing fee. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Okay, and so then there is this other one. Um, That's the appeal fee. Uh, yeah, a written notice of appeal within 15 days of a decision. Um, and then there's a filing fee for the notice of appeal. That has not been filled in either. That's a single fee though, right? Or is it two fees? Yeah, would it be two? I'm just asking the way you stated it, I wasn't sure if it was just one or two. That's on one single fee, correct? Right. It's, it's a fee to appeal. Mm -hmm. And the paperwork there, well, we don't know exactly. Well, that's going to require yeah. a special, it could require a special meeting, calling the, mm -hmm. the board together for, for the hearing. But is yeah. there paperwork that already exists for the appeal? I mean, is the paperwork um, that they're expected to file out, does that paperwork exist? There is a provision in here for us, the Stormwater Commission, um, to be able to um, get technical review. And I think that might be applicable here. Uh -huh. That becomes the responsibility of the applicant. And that becomes right, right, Bill. Okay. Uh, so if we, if we need it, they become responsible for the cost. So we don't need to charge for that. Because it's just Bill taking an app or a, uh, five, They're going to be taking an app. Section 5.3 is the appeal of the land disturbance permit decision. But that's if they appeal your decision as a stormwater commission, but that goes to Superior Court. So that's a whole different level of... We well, that's beyond. Um, we're talking about the appeal fee to appeal to us. They can appeal beyond us, but that's... We don't have any people to make that happen at this point, so... So we need to develop some. Uh, potentially. It depends on how you make angry. I was under the impression that was the appeal we were talking about, is that... To the, yes. To the, to to the, the courts? Us. To yeah. the courts. Oh, no. I thought it was to us. Well, we're talking about what, what Barbara's reading now, though. An interested person may appeal this decision by filing a written notice appeal with the clerk of the Planning Commission at the Rutland Town office within 15 days okay. of the date of this decision, yeah. which is deciding on the permit. Okay. What, what section is that in? Um, notice of appeal rights at the bottom it's of the not, second page? It's not, it's, it's not in the oh, Greg's. It's on, it's on the permit. It's, it's on, on the, the permit. permit yeah. Yep. The notice of appeal must be accompanied. So is this like a two-step process? They they need to notify us that they're appealing it, and then then they they go to superior court as well. No, no, no. no. I thought that they went to the superior court if they didn't if they weren't satisfied with our response. Yeah, I, I, there's an appeal. As I understand it, there's an appeal from his decision to us. Yours, right. Okay, and, and then, then if from they're us to superior court. Superior court. But the fee that we're talking about is the first level. It's the one to us, okay. Here, we, right. there's a, That's what the I was The state has another right. so very handsome fee. I think if, if, if the appeal comes to you and you meet on a regular night, then it's a regular meeting, but if they require a special hearing, then a, 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 a special hearing requires a, a, some sort of fee to be paid because that's a different that's a different deal that's that is an increased expense versus if the hearing is scheduled on a, you know are they making a request for a special hearing yes if so the fee is x number of dollars if you you know require a hearing on a regular schedule there is no fee mm -hmm. i you could have it on a sheet of paper yeah. this is where maybe i think that this is where i think there ought to be a fee because I think if you give the people the ability to appeal without any repercussions, everyone's going to appeal every time. Right, right. That's a good point. So yeah. if you put a fee there, it says if you're really serious about this, this is the fee. Yeah. As opposed to hearing the same just the same answer twice. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't cost you anything to get the same answer again. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, I, because you want to discourage them from making frivolous appeals. Right. If if you really want to move this forward, so there then, should then be some sort appeal, of fee. Then then uh, and I, I I agree. So then the appeal 
would require what additional information are you going to provide to us that, would, that wasn't provided initially that will make a difference? Because if you're going to appeal something, it's like, well, now there's new information, so what, what, do, you, what do you need to do? So, Well, what interpretation of uh, at your level was wrong or what are they what are they appealing mm -hmm. they either have to provide additional information that wasn't present when they uh, went to you for an answer or they provide the um, criteria by which you made an erroneous decision right. and there would be uh, there would be some obviously some documentation work invested right. there so I think we need to develop the paperwork yeah. for that uh, yeah. it doesn't have to be for our next meeting but we can set the f we can set the fee Following Jerry's um, lead on it, it should it should be substantive enough that it makes people think about it. Then, if the initial fee is a hundred, I would suggest the second fee would be two hundred. Norm, um, something that Bill said concerned me. You said if the appeal results in a hearing that's not on a regular meeting night, there's more expense. Meaning what? To the, if the person that wants to appeal wants to say, like, I want a hearing, like, right away, and they don't want to, so say, say, some, so say somebody decided they want to appeal, and they filed the appeal tomorrow, and they said, well, I don't want to wait three weeks, then they would bear the expense of having this group come back to meet outside of your normal schedule. So I would still f I would follow Jerry's lead and say Can it's two hundred if it's a regular meeting, it's four hundred if they want a special meeting. No, Substance no, no, no. no. Norm, no, okay. I wouldn't. I, have, feel, I, wouldn't. I, I just feel I wouldn't. that's burdensome. Um, I don't think the the fees for filing or the fees for appeal uh, should be tied to what time it takes us to meet. And this is a public body, and, and I've never understood that that's been the filing fee for the courts, for zoning. You know, that's been a consideration. I think there's a fee. Um, I would just say $150. $200 and 400 sounds very uncomfortable to me for probably a very small project. Um, uh, so I. I I wouldn't support two. I'd support a hundred and then a hundred and fifty to appeal, or maybe even seventy-five and a hundred. I mean, it's not. We just voted on one. We already hundred. Well, you said two hundred and four hundred just a moment ago. Uh, I'm gonna stop my conversing. <laughs> I thought, we, it, did we, I hear that correctly? We don't do special meetings, we just do, there, it will be put on the next agenda, and that's it, like there's just no. I, I made a suggestion about whether it's in one of our regular meetings yep. or not. Yep. I will retract anything that I just said about that and we'll move on. Okay, so let's do it just on next regularly scheduled meeting and see how that works. And what is the number? For the appeal? For the no appeal. motion pending. That is correct. For two hundred. There's no motion. I didn't think so. So okay. So That's there is no motion. There is no motion. I move. All right. I move that the appeal fee be one hundred and fifty dollars. I'll second that. Any further discussion? One hundred and fifty dollars. Next regularly scheduled meeting. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. At some point, we're, we're going to need procedures for appeal, I would think, because I wouldn't be, I, I don't think we should, we should have an appeal where someone comes in with information that they haven't given to Bill. So if Bill has made his decision on a body of information, so if someone comes in to appeal with additional information, it, it's a waste of our time. Bill should get that additional information and make a decision on it. So when they come in for an appeal, the appeal is based on it. They're appealing his decision, so it's got to be appealing the same information. Same information. Yeah. That's sound doable. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, 
we're, we're, you know, we're not gonna know until we, we run across it how it's gonna work. So it's, yeah. But yes, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think it's you know you would hope we would hope that they would give us all the information they could think of up front, but we don't know. Okay, Norm, mm -hmm. concluding comment. Well, there's two types of appeals. There's a oh, Norm. No, no, no. no the police listen to me. I'm not trying to make it more complicated. I'm just trying to explain. Right. Sherman is correct. If it's an appeal on his, of his decision, it should be just what he appealed, and we review that. There are sometimes some situations where there's what's called an appeal de novo, which you start all over. I don't think that's what is intended here. No. Okay. So it, it should strictly be an appeal on that decision. And we have the right, I believe, to set a reasonable time frame. And uh, there was some comment about what if somebody's in a hurry? Um, appeals don't work that way. They're not mm -hmm. okay. tailored. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Unless there's any other comments about the, the ordinance. We'll switch topics completely here. Okay, the next thing on the agenda, and please keep in mind that most of us have been, have been here since 6 o'clock. So. <laughs> we, we're getting to our little magic hour here, magic hour and a half. So, um, next thing on the agenda is uh, we talked, we started discussing um, maybe putting together some new guidelines. Um, for this group, and that was in light of um, a, a couple of instances recently. Norm going to the select board as a private citizen with s some suggestions for the energy plan, and Jim having some comments about the energy plan as, as a private citizen. So uh, Dana volunteered to, to take on this project, um, and not sure if you've got this is just three nothing weeks. No, there's so. nothing for this evening, and I thought, I think that it's it's good for us to. We weren't a full body the last time, and I think that it would be beneficial to have uh, uh, revisit the conversation and gather additional input. And I'll be happy to fashion those into a set of uh, guidelines and a set of um, a, a code of ethics, for example, in terms of how we're going to uh, operate as a as a collective body and how we're going to operate when we're individual citizens, and how we differentiate uh, our two roles because I think as a collective body when we make a decision uh, the decision of the body is one that should be supported by everyone regardless of whether you were uh, in the minority or in the majority af uh, after that decision has been made yeah. and so I, I believe that most functioning bodies have some uh, type of uh, guidelines around supporting the decisions because we have a very deliberative process uh, during which we um, share openly uh, a variety of perspectives. Once those perspectives are uh, distilled into a common uh, understanding, then uh, regardless of uh, the um, outcome of a vote, that we are committing ourselves, and that's one of the principles that we could be looking at, that we're committing ourselves to supporting the work uh, that we have uh, decided on. Uh, I'm happy to report that in my time here, and I can't even remember now if this is my fifth year or not, but uh, most of the times we reach consensus or have uh, almost unanimity on a lot of the votes that we take. And I think that that's, um, uh, that should always be our goal, that we keep working until we come to uh, a, a point where we can uh, be almost uh, unanimous, if not unanimous, on our decisions so that we're presenting things to the public and to the select board with one voice. And if we um, happen to have a personal uh, interest, we all there are all all boards have some type of um, you know conflict of interest uh, statement or policy that they try to um, uh, promote, so that people who do have uh, a particular interest refrain from uh, expressing that within the context of the of the group uh, dynamic in terms of voting. And they can just abstain, but they make that clear when the voting occurs. And when we're going out in public, if we do have an opinion that differs um, 
significantly from uh, that of the uh, <clears throat> the commission that we should be very clear to say, state that this is uh, something that is a personal opinion, uh, which though debated and decided on in the um, by the planning commission, uh, is something that I strongly believe in as an individual citizen, and that uh, my my perspective does not represent that of the planning commission and may actually be um, um, contrary to uh, what the planning commission as a as a body has decided. Uh, I think that that provides um, uh, clarity transparency uh, and uh, accountability uh, for us in our various roles okay. so that was that was the conversation that we had um, uh, last time and I did say that having worked with boards and uh, having had experience with a variety of uh, these types of guidelines and codes of conduct that I would take on that uh, that project so I've begun my research and have begun to compile some um, uh, some criteria for us to look at and potentially adopt as a uh, as a full um, uh, as a full commission but I thought that it would be more uh, important to resume our discussion uh, this evening and talk about those things that we as a collective group uh, would value in terms of that so I can take our input rather than it being me going off and independently just pulling things from uh, my own uh, professional or personal experience. So if there are things that people would like me to look at, I will take that uh, and uh, try and fashion that into uh, the guidelines that I would then present for us to consider. And I would get that out you know, at the appropriate time prior to a meeting, say a week yeah, before the meeting. Just let me meeting. know when you want right. it on the agenda. So in the next couple of minutes, does anyone have any suggestions for what I, I, I would just like to make a statement in response to Mr. Peterson. Sure. <clears throat> in this particular issue, I have had feelings right along that parallel my comments to the select board. I came on this board rather late in the game. I, I think the thing had already passed here. Yes. By the time I got the the uh, packet. <clears throat> so I had nowhere else to go. And that's why I did what I did. If I had the same opportunity again, I'd do the same thing again. Okay. So um, I, I don't know what Dana's going to suggest, but one option here would be to, to let this group know. Um, that y you have you have these these opinions about in this case the, the energy plan and that y you intend to go to the select board um, but that you make it clear that it's your own opinion so um, I think that might have been one of the issues here um, we never had a discussion with you about about your concerns so um, that was somewhat problematic and even though we had passed the energy plan um, we were still we were still this this commission was going to the select board making presentations to the select board and and all that about it and um, if and you know if you had any suggestions for changes those could have been included in those presentations to the select board even though we had signed off on this energy plan, it's still open, you know, for the select board to to tinker away with, and that's what they're doing right now. So when the conversation came up last uh, last meeting, it was a question about what the the perception was of the planning commission, the planning commission's work, the cohesiveness with which the planning commission does work, and individual members of the Planning Commission making statements to the select board that may or may not have been clear in what capacity they were being made. <coughs> when we had the conversation about how we operate as, uh, as a collective body and as a, uh, as a respective, respectful uh, body in terms of open and uh, complete dialogue, uh, the opportunity for that to happen did not seem to be clearly either delineated or followed. And uh, 
my role was simply to say that if we do want to look at something for guidelines for moving forward, I could provide some input. The chair deputized me to actually draft those, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I took that on as a um, uh, an opportunity for us to learn and grow together, and to be able to make decisions uh, that are in the best interest of uh, the uh, of the town and in our collective best interest, as we can represent uh, all of those diverse opinions uh, around the um, uh, around the town, and so. Uh, the, um, the the question about any particular uh, opinion uh, or any the opinion that is held by any particular member of, of the commission is um, I important during the debate. But once the decisions are made, then we should be uh, collectively supporting that. Um, Jim, I don't know uh, with respect to. Uh, you know, timing and other things around uh, your statement. I don't have an, a, a, an opinion one way or the other about um, uh, what you were uh, representing in your specific your specific concerns. Um, but as a newly appointed member to the commission, it did seem, at least during our discussion, it did seem like um, being the newest member. Uh, to the Planning Commission and coming up with a, a, a set of concerns and a position uh, asking the select board to uh, you know reject the the plan seems a bit uh, over the top for not having participated in the process with the Planning Commission so that was I mean that's just my own personal perspective from that and, and we could have answered some of the some of your concerns since we We've all been working on this for a couple of years now, and uh, s some of those things you brought up were brought up here once, twice, maybe multiple times. And we discussed them from a variety of perspectives to try to address. Yeah. So, um, Norm. Yeah, I guess I'm the uh, <coughs> other person that sort of may have stepped on somebody's toes, and I wanted to talk about that a bit. Or stepped, I, I did not intend. I mean, I came to the board with my concerns <coughs> to the commission, and Barbara and I talked about it numerous times, uh, and, uh, went over the language of it, et cetera. Um, it was my, it was not my intention to mislead the select board. Uh, I thought I made it clear that I was speaking as an individual, um, and that the board had not voted on it, and if I didn't, I, I would have hoped one of the two of you who were there would have corrected it because I certainly didn't want to mislead the board. And my, uh, Jim, I don't know if you're aware, I had suggested that of the nine cr criteria, there were nine criteria for preferred sites, and I thought we ought to add a tenth one uh, out of deference to the process and no make sure of the notice. Uh, to the uh, applicant was clear that he had, might, the applicant might have a hurdle uh, with respect to how much uh, of our energy goal we had met or not met. And um, uh, uh, I would think if that's going to happen again, Dana, and you were gathering data, et cetera, that, it, you know, if anybody's going to go, they ought to come to the ought to come to the commission here and say, look, I really feel strongly about this. In my case, it wasn't a disagreement. It was just what I felt something we had all overlooked, including me, uh, as we went along. And uh, when I thought about it, I, I was just uncomfortable enough to suggest this. And um, so I, I would think the, the protocol uh, is to just make sure that if anybody has got that situation, and Jim's was a unique one, he did come to us and testify against it, but that wasn't in his role as a member of the commission. Um, and the timing was unique, and I suspect that it's a once in a career uh, situation. Um, and I, you know, Jim is a 
been around town affairs for a long time. He would respect us even if we didn't agree with him, and um, uh, I assume would come again. But it doesn't hurt to have some general outlines uh, for this unique situation, and I look forward to Dana's work. Uh, I think we have to be careful because everybody who lives in town has a right to go to the Planning Commission, anybody does, go to the select board in one of these situations where they review our work. My, uh, my, my point in um, uh, offering to explore this was not to account for any individual within the town. It's to ask for a, a, a level of accountability and understanding about the work that we do as a collective body. And that if someone uh, has an issue that uh, cannot be resolved here, then, I mean, this, we're talking about one small criterion out of uh, many that would guide our uh, collective work together. But if somebody is feeling that strongly, then they should stay, make some type of a statement. I don't know what that is, except to say that uh, what I'm coming here as is an individual, uh, even though I am a Planning Commission member, it is not to represent the Planning Commission. And in fact, my, uh, my statement or my position may be in diametrically opposed to what the Commission has, ha has proposed. But that should be something that we already are aware of in the dynamic process where we come and vote as a body to move something to the select board. And it seems to me that it's, it's, uh, it's 11th hour, and sometimes it can appear as an end run and not a cohesive uh, engagement with the, uh, with the rest of the members of the commission. Okay. So can we talk about what we want to do going yeah. forward mm -hmm. rather than... I mean, how would we, we really need to get something in writing that we're all comfortable with uh, that we can right. we can follow going forward? And that yes, that's what I'm that that for. that is the purpose of this. I am mindful of the time. This meeting started at six. Some of and, us, <laughs> for some of us, uh, please I'm it. I'm please it. read your emails and especially the large font, large print in your emails. Um, I'm going to change my email when address it change? to something different. Bill, I'll talk to you about Was that. I not the only one? No, you were not the only one. <laughs> I beat you oh, by five minutes. So, so if I you have uh, some suggestions for Dana, uh, just pass them along. Okay. Get on this. Yeah. So let's move along. Um, let's skip down to the select board public hearings on the energy plan. They've had two, um, but they are considering some changes. And um, criterion number 10 is one of them, and there's a couple other uh, minor ones that they're looking at. So um, what that means, I don't have a timetable for when they're going to you know, have that ready, but they will have to have another public hearing because, uh, because they, they didn't make these changes before the second hearing, 15 days before the second hearing. So they'll have to have a third one. Has that been definitive? Because I understood they were seeking counsel as to whether these were procedural changes uh, or not, at least not. We don't need counsel and their substantive changes. It's it's regardless. They they okay. have made changes, minor, whatever. Uh, they they can't keep doing that without having another. That's not my parent. view. I understood they were looking at it from that direction. That's all. Yes, and and the the statutes the statute does lay out you know what they do if they have substantive changes. It also lays out if they make any changes uh, before their last hearing, their second hearing. So that's that that applies. So they know that, and uh, we'll hear more about that. Will, will we be in, involved in the process at all once they make their changes and? Um, they, they can send it back to us, um, and um, depending on how many changes, they may want us to um, do a, what's called a new report, um, but I don't think it's going to change the plan enough to warrant that, but we'll just have to keep an eye on that. And, and they may just say, hey, take this back. I mean, they still have that option. Okay. But I don't think that's going to happen. The um, 
other thing in our old business list, um, Velco, um, that they asked for an exemption from the 50-foot <coughs> setback um, for their new solar array, 500 kilowatt, I believe, that they're putting in. Um, and, and I don't know if you all recall that they bought the adjoining property that the array is going to be on, and, that's, and they want to put it close there to get it out of a neighbor's view. So uh, the select board went along with that. Um, we're, our role is pretty much finished with that. And did they ever come to get back to you, Bill, with the timetable of when they're going to have their survey done and uh, get all the other the pieces? The was going to be within like 30 to 60 days. Yeah. Like they were getting it done, but they couldn't have it done by like the next meeting. Which we only need the letter by the next meeting. So it, they, they aren't like dragging it out so right so the select board gave them what they needed yes they signed something contingent on right you know. they said, you, your approval is contingent upon getting a letter of intent that you're going to do this with a reasonable amount of time they said yeah we're going to do it so we, yeah we, we, they're satisfied for now but they will start they will still have to file a plot <coughs> yeah because they're they're going changing to, the right they a two parcels to one a plot that show right. that the, the, the parcels are adjoined yes well, what we found was that where we thought there was two plats here on those, there wasn't. We couldn't find one of them. The, the initial Velcro property has never been surveyed and <laughs> put on put on record. Wow. So that's so that's what they have to do. So they had to. And, and when I told that. them that, they're like, "Oh yeah, we know." Like there wasn't wasn't a surprise <laughs> to them. So we're like, okay, we're okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, Anyone have any announcements they'd like to make? Moving down to that part of the agenda. The um, town clerk has suggested that perhaps some of our plats and some of our official documents need an official stamp, so Bill and I will work on one for that. Besides your signature. Besides my signature. And I, sometimes I add the date, sometimes I don't. And so well, the stamp could include that, and then you can just... Yeah. That on yeah, exactly. Okay, down to approval of the minutes from June twentieth. <coughs> different than move to approve. A second. I made some corrections that I sent to Bill ahead of time so that we could save a little time. On the minutes. That's the copy that's on everyone's that's desk. That's the copy that's on everyone's desk. A couple of typos and then um, a, a statement because I was not present at the meeting on the 30th. Uh, it now uh, reflects that after some clerical changes were made, the motion passed four to zero with Mr. Peterson abstaining since I was not at the meeting on the 30th and didn't feel it appropriate to vote for it. But I did make the motion to uh, approve the minutes. go back to the Velcro surveys again uh, item 5a uh, the last of that sentence is both parcels are surveyed and that that was not correct but that was was that presented at the at the meeting at yeah yeah it, we thought it was we, right, we right. assumed that it was correct but yes yeah, so that's so that's correct as far as the minutes go correct right so can you add that to the this set of minutes for tonight that should be if both parcels are surveyed, correct? That's not what we said. It's That's not what was said, right? So the minutes are accurate. There was just an inaccuracy in what was asserted. Right. Yes. Yep. Um, Dana, would you entertain a change on page two, the first number three, um, McCain, <coughs> instead of? M C C A I N M C K A N E. I'm not even sure where you are, Barbara. Okay, oh, are you page Barbara? two. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> page two where? I, I missed that. Page two, the Sorry, first number. K A N E. Three. Yep. And what should that read? Uh, just it's just a misspelling. Right, correct spelling. For some reason, I missed that. <laughs> Anything else? Um, 
It was spelt correctly the second time. Yeah. <laughs> What first? That's our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second, Barbara. Mm -hmm. And Norm, any comments? No. Any comments? Oh, okay. We're waiting on you. Okay. All those in favor of the minutes, as amended. Aye. Say aye. Aye. Opposed. I abstain. I wasn't there. Okay. So two abstentions, is that right? I'm sorry? Were the two abstentions? abstentions? I abstained. Just one. I was not there. Were you here Jerry? last time? I wasn't here. Okay. So there are one, two, three. <laughs> Set up. So three abstentions, right? Is that correct? No, no one I'm wasn't here. here, Jerry wasn't here, and neither was Jim. Jim. Norm abstained and I didn't vote. Okay, we're fine. Oh, okay. Okay. <coughs> The minutes are good. <coughs> Anything else? <coughs> okay. Motion, we adjourn. Thanks, Jerry. Second. Okay. We're adjourned.